Good morning, everybody. It is a pleasure to welcome all of you here. We have the fantastic Dr. Uh, Guadalupe Cervantes and Banu Chosher from Turkey. Today, we are going to talk about happy patients' successful outcomes, pre-operative criteria with our trifocal lens, the Liberty. So first, let me please introduce you our wonderful speakers. We have Guadalupe Cervantes from Mexico. Dr. Cervantes is uh, attending the Asociación para Evitar la Ceguera in Mexico City, ex-president of the Mexican Society of Cataract Surgery, postgraduate professor of cataract surgery and implants at the National University of Mexico. Dr. Guadalupe Cervantes is an expert cataract surgeon in one of the biggest eye hospitals in Latin America. She has been on the field for more than 35 years and has always been teaching fellows from different parts of South, Central, and North America including Spain and Israel. Her main topics of clinical research has been one different technologies and techniques of FACO, pointing out the advantages and disadvantages of all kinds of IOLs. Dr. Cervantes has authored many international papers, co-authored books, and has given many international talks, being a recognized speaker. Thank you so much for being here today with us. Thank and we also, we also have Professor Banu Çoşar from Turkey. Dr. Banu Koshar is a chief of the Aji Badem University School of Medicine, ophthalmology department in Istanbul, Turkey. Dr. Chosar is uh, the author of 26 book chapters and more than 140 articles in the peer-reviewed literature on corneal disease, cataract, and refractive surgery. She serves as a reviewer on several peer-reviewed ophthalmology journals, Dr. Choshar is uh, an active member of the cornea, cataract refractory surgery, and contactology units of the Turkish Ophthalmology Association. So today we are talking about uh, happy patients, successful outcomes. And we all know that implanting trifocal lenses, such as the medical control liberty lens, comes with different challenges, starting from um, precise patient selection and managing potential visual disturbances. To understand uh, the technology behind the lens is crucial to overcome these challenges and these problems. So to begin, let's dive into the technology behind the Liberty Lens. Dr. Choshar, could you please elaborate on how is the Liberty Lens design and why is it different from other lenses on the market? First of all, Liberty Lens has seven uh, diffractive rings, refractive rings in the three millimeter. This is the least number of the rings in trifocal IOLs in the market. And of course, this decreases well, the disturbing optical side effects. Also, it has a constructive interference design. With the help of this design, light scattering is very, very little. And also, uh, it has a high up number of 58, meaning less chromatic uh, aberration. Also, it has a 360 degrees uh, edge, uh, and this uh, edge helps to decrease PCO rates, rates a lot. Also, it has double loop C haptics, uh, and this haptic design uh, causes less toric IOL uh, rotation, and this design is very important, even with time, this double loop C haptic design resists the compressive effects of the capsular back. And as I said, for toric IOL implantation, this is a very important feature. Yes, please. One thing that I think is very important is the number of rings. We never pay attention to how many rings does the lens, the trifocal lens we are going to implant. And if you compare the different technologies, I have done a study comparing Atelisa with 21 rings, Panoptics with 15, and Liberty with 7. And if we know that each ring does light dispersion, so it means the vision gets much better and less dispersion problems, glare and halos because of the number of rings. So think about that. Number of rings means better quality of vision. Okay, so as we understand now the uh, technology behind the lens, Dr. Cervantes, what do you think, what are the most important pre-operative uh, measures to consider when implanting a trifocal IOL? Well, the first thing that, uh, we have to pay attention is uh, the surface of the cornea. I will start from the outside. Um, 
there is a study, very interesting study, where they uh, evaluate 150 patients who came for cataract surgery without any complaints of dry eye. They just show in the clinic for cataract surgery. And when they notice that, they discovered that 69, they made a questionnaire. With the questionnaire, they discovered that almost 69% of the patients had symptoms of dry eye. So anytime you're gonna do a trifocal lens or any premium lens, I think you have to evaluate the cornea, the, the surface of the cornea. And even if they don't have symptoms, if you ask them, you will find that lots of patients do have that. That's one of the, the other thing is the comortalities of the patients. If they have glaucoma, advanced glaucoma, or if they have problems with the retina, or they do have to do like an OCT of the macula, that's also true. Mm -hmm. But there are many features that we are gonna see along the top. Yes, okay. uh, Dr. Chosher, what do you think, what are the most important indications and also contraindications for implanting trifocal IOLs? Sure. Uh, the best candidate for a trifocal IOL implantation uh, is a patient with generally healthy eyes, aside from cataracts, this is important. Also, the patient should have a desire to reduce the dependence on glasses, but also patients should be should not be having unrealistic expectations. We should tell, explain the patient about the unwanted uh, photopic phenomena. So the candidate should know he or she would suffer halos, glare after the surgery, and uh, he, he or she must know and accept the side effects before. Uh, and also, he or she should know that uh, she or he can still need glasses or might even have eye laser correction because it's not a 100% guarantee procedure to be glasses free. When we uh, tell this to the patient and when the patient knows uh, and when he doesn't have unrealistic expectations, at the end, the satisfaction rate will be higher. Also, another important uh, issue here is the angle kappa and angle alpha. Uh, only in 2011, we were uh, aware of angle kappa being an important parameter for trifocal lens implantation. But since then, now we know that angle kappa changes after surgery, but angle alpha does not. So for the time being, angle alpha is a more important parameter for trifocal intraocular lens uh, selection. Uh, but both of them should be less than 0.5. If the patient has all uh, these features, uh, this candidate will be the best one for the implantation. And when we talk about the contraindications, contraindications yes. As Dr. Servant has mentioned, uh, the patient, the candidate, should not have uh, retinal problems, should not have glaucoma, should not have corneal problems, and should not have microtropia. These are very important. Also, for some professions, I don't recommend this surgery. For instance, for pilots, for professional drivers for people who work at night or who work at low light uh, under with low ambient light i don't recommend this problem i would like to make a comment here sometimes we see patients with 20 20 vision with clear lens and with uh, macular problems but very minor like retinal pigment epithelial changes. At this point, we could also think about add-on IOL. Maybe, uh, we should, maybe we are worried that this patient might have progressive macular problems, but for the time being, the macula is almost normal. Then we could also consider add-on IOLs here. Instead of a trifocal IOL, we could consider a trifocal add-on IOL here. What's your experience in terms of uh, outcomes regarding a, a classic trifocal IOL implantation and a monofocal plus a trifocal add-on? Uh, my experience with add-on trifocal IOLs are really supreme. 
The add-on IOL has even less rings. The number of the rings in adult IOL is just six. So the patients uh, have very superior distance, near and intermediate vision with add-on IOL too. So let's turn back to the Liberty, because this talk is about the Liberty lens, not the add-on. Uh, Dr. Cervantes, uh, in terms of pupil size, what are the most important consideration? How do you find the different pupil sizes in terms of changing patient outcomes? What to uh, consider? What are the main important uh, aspects? There is a very interesting study done by Joaquin Fernandez from Spain, where he considered pupils from 2.5 to 4.5 and he measured all the visual acuity curves and also the MTR. And as you can see in the slides, he discovered that after doing all these, the focus curves, the performance, the better performance was in pupils that were from 2.5 to 3 millimeters. So you have to think about the pupil size. If you have a perfect patient, but the pupil is maybe 4.5, the results are not gonna be good. So be careful with the pupil size because that's very important to measure before you do an implant in there. And Dr. Cervantes, I understand that you uh, conducted a very important and very fascinating uh, comparative study between the Liberty, Panoptics, and AT Lisa. Can you please share with us uh, the study design and the most important findings of this study? Uh, we were worried about the, the centration of the trifocals after maybe six months or one year. So in the APEC hospital where we see 1,200 patients a day, we have plenty of patients. So what we decide is just to do decentration of the rings. We took a slide and the OCT of the machine, the OCT, and also the OPD, the Rainer OPD. We took our OPD and then we measure the rings with a slide. This is called the polyte method where you can do the drawing of the, of the rings. And then you compare with the patient rings. And we discovered that the ones who have the bigger decentration, I would say nasal decentration was the more affected one. The visual of nasal decentration was the worst. Of course, the ones who were centered had a better vision and temporal decentration was a little bit less, but not so bad as the nasal decentration. So one of my recommendations is when you implant a, a trifocal, just to leave the haptics vertically at 6 and 12. If you leave them at 6 and 12, the decentration of the lens is less with any of the trifocals that you implant. That's what we discovered. Talking about also halos and glare and blur vision, as you can see there are the three different lenses. We can see the ghosting, the halos and the glare. And the result just came. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No. Sorry. It's okay. And as you can see, when they measure ghosting, halos, and glare, of course, the impact of the three lenses, the Liberty was better in glare. In, in terms of halo, they were very similar. Or in terms of ghosting, Atelisa was the one who presented the worst result. Okay. And uh, Dr. Chosher, uh, I wanted to ask you that what are the most important features of the IOL uh, when considering patient outcomes because different materials lead to different outcomes. And uh, what do you think which uh, aspects of the IOL design play the most important role when it comes to patient uh, outcomes? Nikki, there is a very interesting study uh, done by Dr. Novacek in 2021 in this study, Dr. Novacek compared two intraocular lenses uh, made from the same material. These intraocular lenses were, were Zeiss Lisa 80 and Liberty. They are made from the same Lens 5 material. But the outcomes of the lenses were very different. Uh, the 2020 uncorrected distance visual acuity and uncorrected near visual acuity were superior with Liberty lens. But there was also a very remarkable result too. The capsular opacity rates were so different. Uh, with Liberty, the capsular opacity rate in one year was about 16%. 
But with AT Lisa, the PCO rate was more than 40%. Same material, but this huge difference in capsular opacity rate was, of course, due to the design. As you know, Lisa has a plate optic design, but Liberty has a double loop C optic design. These both lenses are very stable in the capsule, but uh, in terms of capsular opacity, uh, the PCO rate is uh, very less in comparison to AT Lisa. So this study shows us that the material is important, but uh, design is even more important. And Dr. Cervantes, uh, is there any other aspects that many surgeons usually overlook when it comes to patient outcomes in terms of uh, Iowa design? Well, I don't know if you know about the AVI number. We never pay attention to that. It's like a very physical thing about the lenses. But if you compare the AVI number, it means quality of vision in the patient. So if you see all the lenses that they have in the market, they have AVI number from 24 to 35, and the Liberty has a 48 AVI number. So that makes a better quality of vision, less discomfort, and very, really the performance is amazing. And uh, let's talk about a very interesting approach, which is the uh, custom match approach, the custom match design. Um, some surgeons very much in favor of implanting uh, an EDOF lens in the dominant eye and a trifocal in the non-dominant eye. How do you find this approach? Do you think with the liberty it works well? Do you advise against? What's your outtake on the custom match? Uh, I believe custom match patients are happy, but we know that uh, bilateral liberty patients are very happy too. Uh, I don't think we still have enough data regarding the custom match. For instance, how does a neuroadaptation period change with the custom match? Is it shorter or is it longer? We don't know it yet. So till we have enough, uh, till we have enough data, I would like to continue with bilateral same lens uh, and with Liberty uh, I'm very satisfied at all distances at intermediate, near and distance. With the EPS technology intermediate vision is very satisfactory so I don't feel like uh, I need uh, an EDOF lens. What is your opinion? Uh, in Mexico there is a big uh, thought about how do you compare the lenses? They have done it with Alcon lenses. They put a panoptics in one eye and the BBT in the other eye. We haven't done it with the Elon and with it. But my experience, if you see lots of patients that were having the surgery in the States, in the United States, they do one eye for far and the other eye for short. That's something very popular in the States, to do one eye for far and the other one ready for reading. And the results after five or 10 years is that the patients are not very happy because they lose the deep dimension. They don't see really the deep vision. So I will recommend if you have a patient who is happy with the same quality of lenses, you should do that. Otherwise, if you explain them that with a trifocal, the light is going to be divided in three different distances. 30% is going to be for reading, 30% is going to be for computer, and the other 33% is going to be for far. So that's what they try to do when they mix and match the lenses. Put one lens that is going to be all the light for far, and the other one who has a 3D vision. I think you just have to evaluate the patient. There is patient for everything, but it's not my preference. I understand. Thank you. So we heard a lot of very interesting insights about the Liberty lens. Do you have any final thoughts? What would you share with the audience as a take home message about the Liberty? I would like to make another comment about the personality traits. Uh, as we all know, personality is very important in accepting trifocal lenses. And recently there is a study showing that neurotic patients are not happy, <laughs> but patients who are conscientious and agreeable are very happy. And with Liberty, uh, I believe most of the patients will be satisfied unless they, are, they have uh, difficult personality traits. 
uh, because all the defocus curves and satisfaction questionnaires show uh, very excellent results with the Liberty. Uh, so uh, this is my take home message. Thank you. My final measure first is also, I don't know in your country, but in Mexico, the price of the trifocals is completely different from one trifocal to the other. And I believe that if you have a trifocal with a good price, with a good quality of vision, why not to try that? And for Liberty, the results for me have been really very good ones. And everything we have to talk about, it has been proved by studies. That's what I love of this company. I don't talk anything about promotion or, you know, I like this brand or the other. Everything with a team of Joaquin Fernandez and Satish, we have studied every, every variable of the patients and the lens. So we talk with, we say with scientific base to say any aspects of the liberty. So for me, that's something that gives me really uh, comfortable that I know what's going on scientifically based. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise and we're very much looking forward to continue the discussion to further improve patient outcomes. Thank you so much for the participation. Thank you. Yes. Do we have any questions from the audience? If not, I'd just quickly like to tell you that we're going to have our lunchtime symposium from 1 p.m. today, and you're going to hear the Dr. Cervantes talking more about the Liberty Lens, and you can also hear about um, uh, our Elon and the add-on lenses, so please come and join us at Hall 80I from 1 p.m. today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.